Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Give us a minute here. What? What? Oh, yeah. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get started. Um, before we but, uh, before we start the service, I just want to say for those in the room, um, the screen is a little higher than usual, and I apologize for that. My suggestion is sit on the sides, but um, it will enable me not to bend down and look this way, which I have learned is not so good for me. So. We're going to figure out an alternative camera setting, but for this weekend, sit on the sides, you'll be and it'll be better. Okay, so uh, we're going to begin as usual um, with Birkhata Shachar on page 103, for which we rise, please, in body and or spirit. Baruch at Adonai, Elohim, Melech Olam, Asher et Anasak Velavchin, Ve'en Yom Ve'en Laila. Amen. Baruch at Adonai, Elohim, Melech Olam, She'asani Betzalmo. Amen. Baruch at Adonai, Elohim, Melech Olam, She'asani Bakurin. Amen. Baruch at Adonai, Elohim, Melech Olam, She'asani Israel. Amen. Baruch at Adonai, Elohim, Melech Olam, Pokeh Ivri. Amen. Baruch at Adonai, Eloheinu Malach HaOlam, Malbish Arumi. Amen. Baruch at Adonai, Eloheinu Malach HaOlam, Matir Asuri. Amen. Baruch at Adonai, Eloheinu Malach HaOlam, Zokef Kefufi. Amen. Baruch at Adonai, Eloheinu Malach HaOlam, Roka Haaretz Al Hamayim. Amen. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, HaMechil Mitzadei Haver. Amen. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, She'asali Kol Tzurki. Amen. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Ozer Yisrael Bivura. Amen. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, O Teres Arbeti Farah. Amen. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hanofen Ya'efoah. Amen. If we're standing, we can be seated. Baruch Ata Adonai. Amen. <laughs> Avalanachlon <laughs> 
Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. We continue on page 122 and we rise please in body and or spirit for Baruch Shemar. Maruch Shamar Ayalam Baruch Hu Baruch Hatadon Elohim Hatadon Yachi Halamim Melech Mishabach and Fred Shema Hagadol Baruch Hatadonai Melech Mulan, Batish Bacho. Amen. We're standing, we can be seated. We continue on page 130 with Psalm 91. Page 132, we rise in body and or spirit for Psalm 136. <laughs> Kileo lam chastor. 
Leose orim gedolim, ki le olam chaso et hashem eshlem emshelet vayom, ki le olam chaso. Et hayom rukukavim le memshelot balayla, ki le olam chaso, lemakei mitzrayim mifkorem, ki le olam chaso. Vayotze Yisrael mitokam, ki le olam chaso, vediat chaso. Thank <laughs> you. למכה מלכים גדולים, כי לעולם חסתו, ויפרו מלכים אדירים, כי לעולם חסתו. לשיחות מלך האמורי, כי לעולם חסתו, ולעוג מלך הבשן, כי לעולם חסתו. ונתן הרצם לנחלה, כי לעולם חסדו, דגלה לישראל עבדו, כי לעולם חסדו. שבשיף לנו זכה לנו, כי לעולם חסדו, ויפרקנו מצרנו, כי לעולם חסדו. נותן לחם לאכול בשר, כי לעולם חסדו, הודו לשמיים, כי לעולם חסדו. If we're standing, we can be seated. We continue on page 134 with Psalms 92 and 93. מי זה מול של יום השבת טוב לרד לאדוני ולזמן לשם כל יום ולגיד בבוקר חסתי לך. כרס בלבנון נזכה, שתולים בבית אדוני, בחצרות אלוהינו יפריחו. להגיד כי ישר אדוני צורי ולא עוולת תבוא. היי 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 אדוני מלאך יתלבש לבש, אדוני יוזי תזר, אף תיקון תגע בל תימור. עדותיך נמנו מאוד, לביתך נאווה קודש. אדוני, לאורך ימים. Page 
Tehillat Adonai Dabeti, Vivare Kolbasar, Shemko Chole Lambae. Nakhilvar, Kiamet of Yadolam. Alleluia. Page 141, the 150th Psalm. Page 145, the soul of all that lives praises your name, Nishmat Kochai. Nishmat Kochai, Tibarech Hitchim Chadon Eloheinu, Kiruach Epesar Tivayut, Umem Zikra Chamer Kinutami.
וכל בלך לחתיך, וכל חומה לפניך תשלח עליה, וכל לבבות יראו אותה, וכל כן ופריות יזמנו לשמך. כדבר שכתוב כל עצמותיי, תאמר נא. מי כמוך, מה ציוני מחזק ממנו, ואני ואביון מגוזלו, מי מלוך ומשלוך, מי ארוך לך. אההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
אין ככך אדוני אלוהינו בעולם הזה, בין שלתך מלכינו לחיי עולם הבא, אפס פילתך כולנו לימות המשיח. Hi <laughs> One fifty one Elatone. Elaton al Gola Masim, Barotum Gola Pepico Nishama, Goto Betuvo Maleodam, Da Tutevuna Sobevi Moto, Amit Kahe al Hayota Kodesh, Vene Dorbeka Vodal Hamertava, Zekutu Misho Livne Hiso, Vesen Berahamim Livne. Fifty two Thank <laughs> you. 
ורעש גדול מנשאים לעומת סרפים לעומת המשבחים ואומרים ברוך כבוד אדוני ממקומו לאל מלך נמות איתנו למלך אחר הקיים בזמנו ימינו ותשפחות ישמי כי הוא לבדו פועל גבולות עושה חדשות על נחות מצמיח ישועות בורא נפלא המחדש בטובו בכל יום תמיד מעשה בראשית כאמור לעושי הורים גדולים כי לעולם חסדו אור חדש הציון תאיר ונזכחו לנו מהרו לאורו ברוך אתה אדוני יוצר המאורו אמן 154 the second bracha before the שמע אהבה רבה תנו אדוני אלוהינו הם לגדולה בזרח אמרת עלינו אבינו מלכנו ואהבו לבותינו ואימותינו של אבות אחד כי אל פועל ישועות אתה, ובאנו ואכלת מקולם ולשון. וכרפאנו לשמחה הגדול, סלע באמת, להודות לך ולייחדך באהבה. ברוך אתה אדוני, ברוך וברוך שמו, הבוחר בעמו ישראל, אדוני 
Fifty-eight. <laughs> Moshe and Miriam of Bene Israel, Lecha Anu Shira, Besim Haraba, Feamru Holam, Mika Moha Baili Matonai, Mika Moha Nedar Bakodesh, Nora Taylot. Shira Hadasha, Shibhu Geulim, Leshimha, Hasfatayam, Yahad Kulam, Hodu, Feim Liho, Feyameru, Adonaim, Loch, Leolam, Baen, Haira, 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 Together, page one fifty nine. Melek me mit umahaye, umatsmiha keshua. 
Wenn er einmal Natal heilt mit ihm, Baruch atah Adonai, Mechaye hameti, Nikadesh et Shimcha ba'olam, Keshem shmaktishim oto bishmem arom, Hachatu vayad neviecha, Echar hazel zeh ve'amal. Kadosh, 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 Adonai tzeva melech l'aretz, Kivodo. Kadosh, 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 Adonai tzeva ot melech l'aretz, Kivodo. Ahaz bekor, ahash gadol, adil vechazak mashmim kohol, minaseim leumat serafim, leumat ha'am maruk yomeru. Maruk evod Adonai mimekom ho. Maruk evod Adonai mimekom ho. Mimekom ha madhenu tofiha, vetim loch aleinu ki mechavim anachnu lach. Matai timlok betzion, bekarov beyameinu leolam vaheti ishkon. Tit gadal vetit gadash, betoch Yerushalayim ircha, ledol vadol, ulenetzak netzachim, veeneinu, veeneinu tirena malkutecha, adavar hamur beshirei uzecha, על ידי דוד משיח צדקך. אם לא אחרונה לעולם לא הציון לדור ודור, הללויה. אם לא אחרונה לעולם לא הציון לדור ודור, הללויה. לדור ודור נגיד רוד לך, ולנצח נצחים קדושתך הנדגיש. בשבחך אלוהינו מפינו לא ימוש לעולם ועד. כי אל מלך גדול וקדוש אתה, ברוך אתה אדוני. מרחב רק שמו. האל הקדוש. אמן. ישמח משה ממת הפוקו.
Page 166 in the left-hand margin in the stillness. In this expanse of quiet stillness, I reach out and reach in, seeking myself and seeking you. I am grateful for the breath of life, the unending miracles of your creation. How may I best sustain the light in this world? How may I heal my wounded heart, soften and solve the pain which is too often my companion? I beseech you to protect and guard me, I and my household, all my loved ones, the children of Israel, all of your children everywhere. Grant us life, health, sustenance, peace. May the Shabbat offer sweet blessings and may it be a foretaste of the week to come. If we're standing, we can be seated and we continue with Kadish Shalem on page 167. Amen. 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 Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, we will be reading this morning from Parshat Tazria. Um, it begins, the Parsha begins with chapter 12, um, with uh, on page 649, with the law of um, impurity, Tuma, that is conveyed in the process of childbirth. And then it continues with chapter 13, we'll pick up in the middle of um, chapter 13, um, with the laws of Sara'at. Um, and um, Jonathan, your voice is already in my head saying, why are we reading this? Um, <laughs> and what meaning can we derive from this um, that we are? It's a very, very challenging portion of the Torah. Um, and um, we will talk about it at greater length um, after the reading. I do want to say just a couple of things by way of introduction in terms of the things that are so challenging about it. Um, one is that we are very squarely here in the realm of um, the, the, the binary of purity and impurity, tahor and tameh. And um, as I've taught many times, I'm not such a fan of this aspect of religion um, be, because I think it's, um, it's very dangerous. Like here in the Torah, it is very clear that tahor and tameh are not categories that track with morality. And we know that because of the beginning of the parsha in which ritual impurity, tuma, is conveyed through the process of childbirth, which is a mitzvah, right? There is nothing moral about giving birth. It's actually commanded. It's the first command in the Torah. Um, and we know that ritual impurity is also conveyed by tending to the needs of a mate, of a dead body. And that also is very holy work. The, the community that does that is called the Hevra Kedisha, the holy society. And yet it conveys too much. So we know that purity and impurity are not 
um, coterminous with um, morality and immorality, but it very easily slides into moral judgment. Right? And for that reason, it is very, very, very dangerous. It also reflects a kind of, I think, um, unhelpful sort of binary black and white view of humanity in the world, which um, we see the very dangerous effects of in our society right now. I've talked about this at length in the past. I'm not going to um, expound at length, but just like we, we know that when we get into these, it's almost you know, that, that people are either pure or impure, you're either, you know, you're either good or bad, we're in the realm of problems. Um, the other sort of deeply problematic um, piece of this is that it's specifically here in, the, in chapter 13, some of which we're about to read, this question of tsara'at, which is this affliction that can affect the skin, one's garments, or the walls of one's house, um, offer, lends itself to many, many problematic interpretations that attribute sara'at, this, particularly the skin affliction, to particular sinful behavior of the person affected, right? And this is also very, very dangerous. Um, I do want to say, I, you know, I, there's a compl it's complicated, right? Like, I, 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 I've always been very wary pastorally of anything that could remotely suggest that illness of any kind is the sufferer's fault, right? I, that is not a theology I subscribe to. I don't believe that God sort of reaches down and punishes us with illness because of bad behavior, it's very problematic. Um, at the same time, I am, I, I, I was thinking as I was reading this about a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago with a close friend of mine, who's a professor of psychology and a clinical practitioner um, on the West Coast uh, at, a, at, a, at a university that specializes in uh, medical and medicine and science. And she, a lot of her, um, and her work is in connection with, clinical work is in connection with that population. And she told me that protocol, when she, as, a, as a therapist treating people who suffer from physical illness, protocol at the university requires her to ask, do you blame yourself for your illness? And every time she asks it, she squirms, right? Like it makes her really uncomfortable to ask that question. Um, and she's required to ask it. But um, what she told me is that research actually shows that when people say yes, because they believe they're bad people and they're being punished, it's, then that's a place where she needs to work with them clinically. But when people say yes, they believe they are responsible because of specific behavior they engaged in, Research shows that's actually sometimes a productive response because it gives people agency and they feel that they can do differently and help be partners in their own healing and they're not helpless in that. Right, so this question of the intersection of our behavior and illness is complicated and sometimes, yes, we can see cause and effect. Our diet affects our blood pressure or, right, our lack of exercise effect, like we know that. and it is all too easily to slide into that punishment, bad person stuff, and especially in relationship to other people. And as I've noted many times, and I feel obligated to say it every time we read this parsha, I am very well aware of the way in which this parsha in particular was used in such devastating ways during the AIDS crisis to blame people who are suffering from AIDS for the illness saying, this is God's punishment because you are engaging in sinful behavior, right? And that's an abomination. That's Chilul Hashem. That's like, we have to reject that outright. And I don't think we can read this without noting that. Um, the third thing I want to say about this is the difficulty with this parsha is just sort of and this Jonathan, I like I hear your voice. Like, what does all this have to do with religion? And especially sort of the ick factor here. I mean, these parshiots are just like, 
they're icky, right? We're reading like bodily fluids and like skin diseases and, you know, like, really? Like that's, we come to shul to hear that? Um, and um, one sort of um, potentially redemptive way to think about this parsha actually is precisely through that ick factor because these passages really are challenge our sense that religion or spirituality or prayer is only about or only has room for our quote nice parts the pretty parts right and um and here i want to i want to bring um the uh, one of my all-time favorite essays, so just a couple of sections from it, that I know I've um, taught before, but it's, it's so powerful. This is a chapter from uh, Kathleen Norris's The, Cloist the Cloister Walk. And um, this is a section, a chapter called The Paradox of the Psalms, in which she describes her participation at a Benedictine monastery in reciting psalms every day. And she begins here by saying, um, this is obviously from a Christian perspective, um, church meant two things to me when I was little, dressing up and singing. I sang in choirs from the time I was four years old and for a long time believed that singing was the purpose of religion, um, an illusion that was rudely swept away by the rigors of uh, catechesis. Church was also a formal affair a matter of wearing, quote, Sunday best and sitting up straight. Like the girl in Anne Sexton's Protestant Easter, eight years old, it's a fabulous poem by Anne Sexton. I knew that, quote, when he was a little boy, Jesus was good all the time, unquote. And I made a confused attempt to connect his story with what I saw around me on Sunday morning, and this is a quote from the poem, they pounded nails into his hands. After that, well, after that, everyone wore hats. The important thing for me is that I'm wearing white gloves, right? That's the kind of nice view of religion. Like we dress up and we wear right, nice gloves. And then Kathleen Norris goes on to say, I have lately realized that what went wrong for me in my Christian upbringing is centered in the belief that one had to be dressed up, both outwardly and inwardly, to meet God. The insidious notion that I need to be a firm and even cheerful believer before I dare show my face in, quote, his church. Such a God was of little use to me in adolescence. Unlike many women, and like many women of my generation, I simply stopped going to church when I could no longer be, quote, good, which for girls especially meant not breaking rules, not giving voice to anger or resentment, and not complaining. And she goes on to say that reading praying psalms every, way, every day in which she learns that God in the psalms behaves in ways that God is not allowed to behave in systematic theology. Um, experiencing psalms in this way, she says, allowed me gradually to let go of that childhood God who had set an impossible standard for both formal prayer and faith, convincing me that religion wasn't worth exploring because I couldn't, quote, do it right. I learned that when you go to church several times a day, every day, there is no way you can, quote, do it right. You are not always going to sit up straight, let alone think holy thoughts. You're not going to wear your best clothes, but whatever isn't in the dirty clothes basket. You come to the Bible's great book of praises through all the moods and conditions of life. And while you may feel like hell, you sing anyway. To your surprise, you find that the Psalms do not deny your true feelings, but allow you to reflect on them right in front of God and everyone. So I, I love this passage. I, I come back to it over and over and over again because I think that it says something about these icky passages, right? In which we read that um, the Kohen looks at our ickiness. 
at the affliction. Um, and by the way, the Zohar says, we'll come back to this, that when the Torah here talks about the Kohen, who looks, we'll read this many times, when it mentions Aaron's name, it refers to him, the Kohen Gadol. But any unspecified reference to the Kohen in this section is a reference to God. Meaning, we bring our woundedness and the achy parts of ourselves, and we show God. And we say, here I am, in all my flaws, in all the kind of embarrassing stuff that I don't want to talk about, that I don't want to look at. The purpose of religion is to actually bring that before God. So that's our, you know, by way of introduction to the reading, um, and we'll come back and talk further about it after we read some piece of this. So we are in the, we're on chap page 654 in the, uh, in the Hamash, and, uh, and we are on verse 18 of chapter 13, in the middle of this discussion of Zarat. Um, so I'll begin in the Hebrew, um, verse 18, the bottom of 654. Uvasar ki hev overol shachin v'nirpa vaya b'makom hashachin se'er levana ovaher levana adam damet v'nir ah el hakohen v'rah hakohen v'ine mar shafar min aur u'serah hafach levan. So we'll continue with verse 24 um, on page 655. Will somebody um, volunteer to unmute and um, read for us? Um, or if somebody wants in the room wants to come up and read for us in the English, beginning with verse 24. Anybody want to read? Jay, thank you. <clears throat> when the skin of one's body sustains a burn by fire, and the patch from the burn is a discoloration, either white streaked with red or white, the priest shall examine it. If some hair is turned white in the discoloration, in the discoloration, which itself appears to go deeper than the skin, it is leprosy that has broken out in the burn. The priest shall pronounce him impure. It is a leprous affection. But if the priest finds that there is no white hair in the discoloration and that it is not lower than the rest of the skin and it is faded, the priest shall isolate him for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest shall examine him. If it has spread in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him impure. It is a leprous affection. But if the discoloration has remained stationary, not having spread on the skin and it is faded, it is the swelling from the burn. The priest shall pronounce him pure, it is, for it is the scar of the burn. If a man or woman has an affection, an affection on his head or in the beard, the priest shall examine the affection. If it appears to go deeper than the skin, and, if, and there is a thin yellow hair in it, the priest shall pronounce him impure, it is a skull, a scaly eruption in the hair or beard. <clears throat> but if the priest finds that the skull affection does not appear to go deeper than the skin, yet there is no black hair in it, the priest shall isolate the person with the skull affection for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest shall examine the affection. If the skull has not spread and no yellow hair has appeared in it, and the skull does not appear to go deeper than the skin, the person with the skull shall shave himself, but not without shaving the skull. Oh, but without shaving the skull. 
the priest shall isolate him for another seven days. <clears throat> on the seventh day, the priest shall examine the skull. If the skull has not spread on the skin and does not appear to go deeper than the skin, the priest shall pronounce him pure. He shall wash his clothes and he shall be pure. If, however, the skull has, should spread on the skin after he has been pronounced pure, the priest shall examine him. If the skull has spread on the skin, the priest need not look for yellow hair. He is impure. But if the skull has remained unchanged in color and black hair has grown in it, the skull is healed. He is pure. The priest shall pronounce him pure. Shkoyach, Jay. Thank you. Will I'll just read the last two verses um, in the Hebrew, verse 38, the bottom of 656. All right, that's that's the reading. Um, challenging though it be, and um, we'll continue now with the Mishaberach for healing, which will be found on page one seventy three. Um, as always, um, I'll invite us to call out the names of anyone for whose healing we wish to pray, and um, uh, those online just give us a minute for those in the room to name. Um, our loved ones, and then either unmute and call out the names or put them in the chat, and I will read them. Page 173. Him. Anyone online? Shana uh, Rifka, Shana Rifka, Bat Pora, Chavid Bat Devora, Rona Javich, Joe Krosky, Joe Tobin, Ted Berger, Bill Minkin, Joanne Siegel, Kim, Ari, Linda, Moshe Leb, Rachel, Bay, Esther. Malka, Josephine, Marty, and Susan. Martha Siegel, Wyatt Norton. Laura Gabriela Batsova. I see Nachama Batsiro, Chaim Huna Ben Fegershena, Kim, Robert Seibel, Tamara Gabriela Batsara, Chaya Rachel, Bat Adina David, David Vasim, Chabad Chasia Reza. Chaya Sara Bat Shoshana Rezel, Yosef David Ben from Amalka, Aiden Bat, uh, Aiden Ben Ronit. Any other names? Yes, Linda Livingston. Tamara Gabriela Bat Sara, Tikva Bat Lea, Malka Reza Bat Leba, Pesha Naomi Bat Sarachana, Shalom Ben Lea. Daniel Arie Ben Hanna, Esther Batfrania, Nachama Batsiro, Chaim Huna Ben Fegershena, Kathleen Teresa Zekowski, Jake Ogden, Sarah Chaya Lea Batfredel, Yisrael Ben Yitzchak. Hakadosh Baruchim al Rachamim, Malayhem Lachazakam Rapotam, Bishlach Lahem, Rafosh Lamamina Shamaim, Refot and Nefishvat Aguf. Betosha Rokhlim Bakazak, it did you skim betok him? Shabbatim is oak of Ravalavo, Hashtab, all of his man Kariv, Benumara Mehin, with the one who blessed her ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bring blessing and healing to those of our loved ones who suffer illness. May the Holy One in mercy restore them to health and vigor, granting them spiritual and physical well being, together with all others who are ill. And may God grant strength to those who tend to them. So, Shabbat is a time to refrain from crying out. We yet open pray that healing is at hand. And let us say, Amen. Amen. May the source of strength who 
bless the ones before us. Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Bless those in need of healing with refuah the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Ah. So we'll um, turn now to the prayer for the country, which is on page 177 in the left-hand margin. Um, and uh, does somebody want to volunteer to pray on behalf of us all? Um, Alan, please come up here to do it so people can see and hear you. We desperately need this. Our God and God of our ancestors, grant to our country the will and wherewithal to fulfill its calling to justice, liberty, and equality. May each of us fulfill our responsibilities of citizenship with care, generosity, and gratitude, ever conscious of the extraordinary blessing of freedom ever mindful of our duties to one another. Bless those who volunteer to labor on behalf of us all. May they find the strength and the courage to complete their tasks and fulfill their dreams. May our judges, our judges, elected leaders and all who hold public office exercise their responsibilities with wisdom, fairness, and justice for all. Fill them with love and kindness. Bless them that they may walk with integrity on the paths of peace and righteousness and give them the courage to enforce the laws of the United States and the state of New York as written. Creator and protector of all, Watch over our armed forces and all those entrusted with our safety as they daily put their lives at risk to protect us and our freedoms. Be with them in times of danger. Give them courage to act with honor and dignity as well as insight to do what is right in your eyes. Fill us all with the gifts of love and courage that we may create a world that reflects your glory May each respond to the charge of your prophet, for what does Adonai demand of you, but to act justly, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. May the one who brings peace on high bring peace and prosperity to our world, and keep us in safety, and let us say, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. And um, will somebody um, want to... Uh, volunteer to lead us in the prayer for Medinat Yisrael, the state of Israel, in the left-hand margin on Miriam, on page 178. Um, wait, Miriam, I'm, I'm unmuting you. Okay, you're good. Bono shel olam kabel nabrachamim ubratzon et zvilatenu ba'ad medinat Yisrael. Sovereign of the universe, accept in loving kindness and with favor our prayers for the state of Israel, her government, and all who dwell within her boundaries and under her, author and under her authority. Open our eyes and our hearts to the wonder of Israel and strengthen our faith in your power to work redemption in every human soul. Grant us also the fortitude to keep ever before us those ideals upon which the state of Israel was founded. Grant courage, wisdom, and strength to those entrusted with guiding Israel's destiny to do your will. Be 
with those on whose shoulders Israel's safety depends and defend them from all harm. Spread over Israel and all the world your shelter of peace and may the vision of your prophets soon be fulfilled. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Lo yisa goy el goy cherev, velo yilmedu od milchama. Amen. Thank you, Miriam. I'm going to continue with the um, prayer for the captives in the IDF. שישובו כל שבויי ישראל ונדריו לחיק ביתם. שים שלום בארץ ושמחת עולם לכל יושביה ופרוס וקד שלומך על כל יושבי תבל ארציך וכן יהי רצון ונאמר אמן. And we continue, we pray for all those in Israel and Gaza, Jews and Palestinians and people of every religion, nationality and race. Who are victims of violence they did not choose and hatred they do not harbor. May the merciful one heal the wounded, comfort the bereaved, displaced, or traumatized, and keep them all safe from further harm. May perpetrators of hateful violence be vanquished, and may the Blessed Holy One grant courage, strength, and success to all who love kindness, practice compassion, strive for understanding, defend freedom, and yearn for a shared and lasting peace. So we'll come back now. Um, if we're standing, we can be seated. And we'll come back now to our Parsha. Um, I want to also just note, having now read it, that although our, our Humash translates Tzara'at as leprosy, um, it's not leprosy, right? It's some other thing. Um, we know that in part because it affects also the walls of our house and our clothes, right? It's not, it's not a disease that we know. Um, so I wanna offer now a couple of other sort of possible entry points or ways of making sense of these sections. Um, and I wanna, I'm, I'm hoping Rabbi Boino that you'll um, jump in at appropriate times when something moves you or if I'm in any way misspeaking. Um, and so one thing, one way to kind of rescue these sections is to lift up how embodied um, or what they teach about how embodied Torah and Jewish tradition is. And as I say that, I want to pause to note the how complicated um, and individual and personal each of our relationships and our experience of our own bodies is right like our relationship to our bodies can be often is very very fraught um, and i want to just note the extent to which our bodies can hold trauma or be sources of shame or disconnection. Um, and I, before going further, I wanna say there is no, quote, right way to relate to our bodies, right? It's another way in which our, many of our texts interpreting this, position, this, this um, passage are problematic. And I hope that nothing that I say suggests otherwise and I want to invite everyone to take what's helpful, both in the text and in my words, and let go of the rest, right? In terms of how we relate to our, our bodies. Um, but certainly, I think biblical um, religion, biblical Judaism, had no concept 
of the duality of body and soul, right? We, nefesh in the Torah means personhood. We sometimes translate nefesh now as soul, but in the, in the Bible, it's person as a, as a single entity. And that duality that the body and soul are separate did enter Jewish thought later. And um, I would say in often to disastrous effect in some other traditions um, became really a prime feature of many Christian religions, often resulting in this notion that the soul is good and the body is sinful. Um, and um, I, I, you know, as I was thinking about this, it's actually kind of amazing um, that religious, the, that theologies, which for example, saw Jesus as the incarnation, the physical embodiment of God, could somehow get to this point that the body is evil and needs to be controlled, and only the soul is holy, right? That's not normative Judaism, right? There are threads of that in the extremes, but nor normative Judaism, even where we have a duality of body and soul, it's not generally body bad and evil and soul good. The body and bodily impulses are to be sanctified. They are sources of holiness the body and our needs and our impulses, right? Are, are to, they're, they're a possible connection with God and holiness. So with all that in mind, um, I, I wanna offer a few insights from the Zohar, from the Jewish mystical tradition that resonated for me on this parsha. Um, it, it, and a, and a particular way of thinking about the integration of body, mind, and soul in a non-dualistic way. And we'll see where it goes. And Rabbi Borno, I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna spark some thoughts for you and you'll chime in, right? So first of all, the Zohar suggests that Sara'at emerges from an excess of anger and harsh judgment in the world, right? That Sarat emerges in a time and a culture where the forces of anger and harsh judgment are everywhere and very strong. And the Zohar's overall read of this passage tends toward the systemic, in contrast with a lot of the traditional Midrashim, which see like Sarat is caused by Lashon Hara, the person did something bad and it manifests as tzara'at. No, in the Zohar, it's not you're an angry judgmental person and so you're gonna be stricken with tzara'at. It's this, it's more like in times of great anger in society, we will see manifestations in our bodies in various ways. And it's not a one-to-one -one co correlation between the person being angry, right? It's angry times have physical manifestations in that society among, among the people who live there. And the Zohar understands the human body to be patterned on the divine body, right? They take B'Tselem Elohim, the image of God, sort of like almost literally, right? That there is a divine sort of, not, not necessarily in physical form the way we know it, but that God manifests in this sort of bodily form and we're patterned on that. And, um, and so B'Tselem Elohim being in the image of God, yes, is the basis of the dignity of all human beings, right? And it's like our best self in that sense. And here, that this note, the notion of tsara'at, that some physical manifestation of, of a lesion on the skin actually reflects something happening in the divine. The pain of the shrina, that there's something amiss in the world, ways in which God is, so to speak, under assault, right? Or by human behavior or is ignored, it's like it's, that that manifests in us. It's not a direct one-to-one -one correspondence, right? But that 
that that we're seeing something in our bodies that reflects something out of balance or disordered in the cosmic universe within God. And the source is a, is a, is, is a kind of anger. And, and this is really striking, the Zohar notes that the word that is used at the very beginning of chapter 13 to talk about a person who has a, this Sarat thing is Adam. Not Ish, but Adam in the very beginning in chapter 13. And Adam is the word that refers to the highest level of the human being, primordial Adam, right? There are lots of words for the human being, Enosh, Gever, Ish, or Isha, but Adam is like our highest, most elevated self. And, and the self that is most attuned and reflective of the divine. And, he, and the Zohar notes that, the, that Sarat afflicts first Adam, not the worst sinner, the highest part of the self is what suffers this, right? And so Sarat, in that sense, in the Zohar's view overall, yes, it's a spiritual ailment reflected in the body, but very much not you were bad, and so you're being punished. In a sense, the opposite. Sometimes our bodies hold pain and suffering of the world. And the most sensitive souls may reflect, reveal, or suffer all the anger swirling around. Right? That's kind of roughly the Zohar's read of this, right? And so there's a sense in which there is a, there like that they, we don't see human suffering as a result of our sin, but a manifestation of a systemic problem in the world. And we think about like all of the, you know, not just the pandemic of COVID, right? But all of the epidemics that we see in our society today. There are so many, I mean, with all of our medical advances, there are all of these various illnesses that seem to be on the rise that we don't know what to do about. And I think intuitively, many of us feel something's messed up, right? Like there's something messed up here, right? And this takes it out of the, you know, punishment. It's just a, a correlative reflection. Um, I, the man of Shaloach, right? We, I, I mean, who's a great Hasidic master on this passage, says specifically that Sara'at relates to the great souls whose reward, whose goodness is not received in this world, but in the world to come. Like they don't seek or get a feeling of goodness in this world. It's all hidden away from them in the world to come, right? And they're the ones who are most likely to suffer sarat. What an extraordinary reading, right? It's like, it's a way I think of dealing with the problem of the righteous sufferer. Why do good people suffer such painful illness, right? And he goes on in a different direction, but I just wanted to, just wanted to lift that up and I'll, and I'll end with one last thing. And then I'm hoping, Rabbi Bueno, maybe you have some thoughts that this evokes for you and, I'm, and certainly any corrections from your experience that I should be aware of. But listen to the Zohar here, right? So the Zohar says, first of all, um, it says in our text, he, Adam, the person who has this tzara'at, shall be brought to the Kohen. And they read, as I mentioned earlier, meaning God, the Blessed Holy One. As it is written, if the Kohen sees it, and the Zohar says, come and see, in one place, verse 2, it references Aaron the priest, and in another place, verse 9 of chapter 13, it references the priest, unspecified, and when it says unspecified, this is the Blessed Holy One. We're talking about God. So the person is brought before God, right? And, um, and God, in a sense, is the healer because God, in a sense, is the one who needs to be healed. Rabbi Yitzchak disagrees. 
Rabbi Yitzchak says, no, we're talking about the human priest. And listen to what he says. Rabbi Yitzchak said, we have learned as follows. Nega tzara'at, a scaly affliction. Nega affliction is harsh judgment prevailing in the world. Tzara'at means scaly. And then it, the reference, there's a reference in the text to the, it, the, it being segiru, which is closing in the text. And he says, as has been said, closing off supernal light, closing off supernal goodness, which no longer descends to the world. Sara'at is a manifestation of the channels of goodness being blocked. Right? And this is resonating with me because as I said a couple of weeks ago, and I've mentioned a few times, I've really been playing with the metaphor of God as connective tissue in the body, the channels, right? What happens when those channels get blocked? It's exactly what he's saying. And he goes on to say, Ki be adam. If a person has, he's quoting verse nine, unspecified, right? He shall be brought to the priest the Kohen, and Rabbi Yitzhak says, the priest below, the human being, because he is qualified to open that closing and kindle lamps so that through the Kohen, blessings may spread above and below and the affliction may be removed and disappear and the radiance of compassion may settle upon all. Thus, he shall be brought to the Kohen. What is the Zohar saying? The, the Zohar is looking for the healers in the world. The Kohen is the healer who looks deeply and can help open the channels. Through the very, maybe through the very act of seeing and naming suffering, the act of chesed itself that opens the channels, right? When you think about like anyone in the healing profession, right? Doctors and therapists and, you know, physical therapists and anyone who practices healing, right? That when we see in an integrated way, Right, and we look and it's so striking that the, the Kohen is supposed to look and say, is it surface on the skin or is it deep? Right, like we, it opens the channels and it's not, the vision here is not a direct cause and effect, right? That physical illness is gonna be caused by some, is healed by somebody looking with love. No, it's that the process of seeing others in pain, naming it, really looking, right? Opens in the general sense, in a systemic sense, channels and brings compassion and love back into the world and somehow shifts the energy in society as a whole. And everyone benefits. Right? That's the image here. They take it out of the individual sufferer and lift up the idea that individual sufferers are, re are reflecting something in the larger society. And when we treat it that way and we see deeply, then we bring healing also in the larger society. Right? And I, I want to suggest this is not like, you know, it's not just kind of you know, woo woo mumbo jumbo stuff, right? Where like somehow the, right? It's like when we understand individual suffering in the context of a systemic problem, then we have the creativity to bring systemic solutions. And we stop blaming and scapegoating and, right? And we look at what's going on in our society, whether it be physical things, you know, maybe some of why we're suffering from a lot of weird things is we're consuming all this plastic. Maybe we need to deal with that, right? Maybe the opioid crisis is caused by real imbalances in our society. 
maybe the the rise of like tick-borne pathogens is because we've screwed up our environment and we're not functioning right like when we practically we can start looking at you know let's not blame the people suffering from an opioid addiction let's look at our healthcare system let's look at poverty but also on the energetic level the spiritual level the anger right like how damaging in our bodies a world of anger is and how healing it is to bring love and kindness. So I'm going to stop and Robert Bueno, I hope you have, you have lots of thoughts here. Well, as, as usual, it's like, uh, I feel like a super commentator on Rashi. There's so much in what you just said, and I'm like relating it to things you've already said in past weeks. So, um, and trying to organize it all in my brain, which may or may not come out coherently. Um, but I think you named it, you, you, so many things you've already named, I think, like I, I, it sounds like what the, Zo, the relationship that the Zohar is making here is to systemic oppression. And we can speak to that as Jews, you know, even, even if, if, if you cannot look at other uh, groups or groups that intersect with us, because so many do. Um, you know, being, being Jewish means that, you know, we have a multitude of races, we have a multitude of other identities that, you know, include, that are inclusive of us. You know, um, and how how the there are new nuances to the ways in which we are affected by the greater world, which if you are not Jewish, you might not get. If you are not connected to the community, you might be unaware, and it may or may not affect you. Um, and I was really thinking. You know, when you said scapegoating, I was like, you know, like so many words that I was thinking while you were talking, you ended up saying, you know, and how we have so many manufactured problems in our society today um, to in order to avoid um, addressing systemic oppression. And um, and and in some ways, those are creating even further um, uh, problems and uh, worse systemic oppression We're 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 creating um uh, trauma where trauma doesn't need to be. Um, and I was really thinking largely of the concept of, uh, of who we need to become in order to survive, who people need to become in order to survive a world that's full of anger and judgment and the idea of Zara'at as a, as a shield um, that blocks, but also damages and hurts. I don't like the word damages, X that word. Um, that also is, is quite painful. Um, and really thinking of that relationship with trauma, that when, when you are being traumatized, you can't heal from that trauma. You know, whatever's going on, you, you probably need, like when, when someone's in crisis, you don't, when, when there is a crisis, you're not doing healing work. You're doing protective work very often. Um, you know, and I was really thinking of how you know, in, in community, right? You know, when you're in community with other people who can see it, you know, and, and this is actually diff quite, this is quite difficult for us right now. And, you know, I think I've said this before, like, you know, when we're in community with other Jews, we have to remember, you know, we love each other. We have to remember we're really on the same side, even when it feels like, feels like we're not. Um, and I think that that's the key to be able, be, being able to move that dial further, you know, um, but, um, you know, we can't live with that Zara'at forever. We can't just be in a place where we need to be shielded. You know, part of being in community with each other and being in community when we are groups that are systemically oppressed, this is one of them, is that we can drop that shield. You know, we all have Zara'at to some extent. You know, and also we also have to let it go. We have to heal from it in whatever way we can. And I was thinking of you talking about the concept of Amalek in past weeks, and what I kind of gleaned from that is Amalek as, gen as, as intergenerational trauma. That intergenerational trauma is there to help us and protect us and save us, but it can also be our detriment and downfall. And in trying to keep ourselves safe, we can become much less safe. And we can become people, and we can become, uh, you know, really um, uh, not absorbent of that light of God not absorbent of uh, the relationships that we have with other people because we've assumed such a protective state. Um, so I think that, uh, yeah, but also with so much compassion that we, you know, sometimes we need the Zerat. 
you know, because, uh, you know, we might be able to be in community with other people and kind of let that guard down and feel that relaxation, feel that okay, you know, but we go out into the rest of the world and, uh, you know, that anger and judgment affects us and, uh, and we, we can't do anything about it. Anyway. So what I, I love I love everything you said and and one of the things that it evoked for me is to understand the response to the diagnosis of Tzara'at is to segregate the person right and we tend to think of that as like you have to be isolated and right it's certainly not about contagion we know that because there were laws that if it were about contagion makes no sense like if it's someone who's about to be married, you wait until after the wedding to diagnose so they don't miss the wedding, right? That's obviously not a fear of contagion. But it's usually seen as like, oh, that's a bad thing. You have to be isolated. And you, what you just said made me flip it, that it may be that the, that the Kohen in the, you know, the healer in sensitivity looks and says, the way in which you are experiencing all the anger in the world is causing you pain and you need to you need a little self-protection for a while like you need time to heal before you can continue to be exposed to a society like this because it's hurting you and so we're going to give you some protective time away from the anger to to heal yourself like it's like you're the you're the symbol, you know, like, you, yes, it's manifesting in you as a symbol of something amiss in society, but you're not supposed to self-sacrifice that way. You're actually supposed to engage in self-care. Right. So take a step back and heal. Yeah. To say a right. word there, if it's okay, but yell, yeah. at, me, yell at me if I'm jumping into No, 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 please. Um, like that we be, like, like, I'm, and I'm stealing and paraphrasing from a thousand people who've said just about this exact same thing that if you become like in those moments, like this person, this, this um, imaginary, but very real person we're talking about, you know, um, like, yeah, you have become who you have become in order to survive so much. Um, you know, uh, something that I think about, and I think this is okay to say in this setting is, you know, uh, because of how mammals work, Right, we are mammals. <laughs> Hi, Scout. Uh, see you too. Uh, you know, uh, we we are not solitary beings. We need each other in order to survive. We're not. I mean, even lizards do. <laughs> but like, you know, um, so our emotional safety and our ability to connect with each with each, with other people is just as important as our physical safety, and they're so related. You know, um, you know. But if we are only protecting ourselves, if we are only in that state, you know, um, we can't thrive, you know, uh, you know, and, and we need to be able to do both. And sometimes when we're, when we've been, we've been so afflicted by, by crisis, by trauma, by tragedy, you know, we do need to be able to, okay, like you need to heal from how you've learned to survive so that now you can be happy. You can be curious. You can seek, you can learn, um, you can feel like you can make a mistake, you know, um, all of those uh, things that we need to do to, to, to have a full, a fuller, I don't want to say a full, that's, you know, but have a fuller life, you know, uh, life is hard, but it can't only be hard. Um, right. Anyway. Thank you. Wow. So let's, um, let's turn to page 204 for Enkelhenu and we'll close our service. Baruch Eloheinu, 
ברוך אדוננו, ברוך מלכנו, ברוך מושיענו. אתה הוא אלוהינו, אתה הוא אדוננו, אתה הוא מלכנו, אתה הוא מושיענו. אתה הוא שהגדירו אבותינו, לפניך את כתורת הזמים. עלינו לשבח לאדון הכל, לתת גדולה ליוצר בראשית, שלא עשנו כגוי הארצות, ולא שמענו כמשפחות האדמה, שלא שם חלקנו כהם, וגורלנו ככל המונן, ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא, שהוא נוטה שמים ויוסד ארץ. על כן נקווה לך אדוני אלוהינו ככתוב בתורתך, אדוני ימלוך לעולם ועד, ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ, ביום ההוא וביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד, ושמו, ושמו, ושמו אחד. We turn now to Kaddish Yatom, to Mourner's Kaddish, on page 207. Those in mourning and those observing yard site may either rise or reattune your attention. And if you're on Zoom, you can mute the microphone. As we recite Mourner's Kaddish on page 207. Yit Gadal v'yit Kaddash Shemeh Rabah. Amen. Ve'alma divra kiluteh ve'yamlik malchuteh. בחייכון ובימיכון ובחיי לכל בית ישראל, בעגלה ובזמן קריב ואמרו אמן. אמן. יהי שמי רבה מברך לעולם ולמי עלמיה. נתברך וישתבח ויתאר ויתרומם ויתנשא, ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלה לשמי דקודשה בריחו. לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תלוש בחלתה ונחמתה, לאמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן. אמן. יהי שלמה רבה אבין שמאיה בחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל. Amen. Standing, we can be seated. Um, we do have a couple of announcements this morning. First and foremost, a very, very happy birthday, birthday to Aina today. So Aina, happy, happy birthday. Yom Huledat Sameach. May it be a year of health and strength and joy and blessing. Um, uh, Monday, we are continuing the series, uh, Monday evening of learning that I've been doing with Rabbi Lisa Gelber. We'll be on Zoom. Um, anybody who signed up for the series will get the link and the text on Monday. Um, and um, if you haven't signed up for the series, just email me and then you'll get the, you'll get the email. Um, and other than that, watch for an email most likely on Sunday from me with some Pesach resources. Um, I'll send the link to the Rabbinical Assembly's guide and some other um, um, uh, guides about koshering and what, you know, what to buy and what not to buy. And also um, a link to, uh, to sell chametz. We are going to be selling chametz through Rabbi Luciana Letterman, who is doing it on behalf of the JTS community. She, she's, uh, she runs the Beit Midrash at JTS. 
and um, has graciously offered to include ours in the sale. So I will be sending out the link. If you use the link and you sell your chametz through JTS, it's customary to make a donation um, to the to the, uh, the the institution that's taking care of it. So I recommend a small you know you make a, a donation to JTS and designate it to the Beit Midrash so that. Um, it can support her work and um, in creating a, a vibrant, wonderful place for our students to learn together. Um, and anything else? That, I think that's it for announcements, unless Rabbi Boyner, you have anything? So we will close with... Adon Alam, page 211. 211. <laughs> Page 77, Kiddush, we rise in body and or spirit. And uh, now that we can see you, Ina, once again, happy, happy birthday. Um, Kiddush on page 77. Shamrovene <laughs> Free Hagafen. Lechaim, Shabbat.